What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another um, financial charting tutorial. Um, in this video, in the next few videos, we're going to be going over how to actually start graphing this stuff and charting it up. Um, so it's going to be some pretty exciting stuff. And just to make sure, don't forget to make sure that you can do the following two things. Import matplotlib and then import numpy. Man, I can't type it. Without any errors. If you get an error like this, um, and it says import error, no module named, you know, whatever you're trying to import, uh, then you something has gone wrong with your installation. So, as long as everything is good, let's go. So, the first thing that we want to do is make sure we have all the proper imports that we need. So, the first one we want to import is time, uh, because sometimes we want to add, like, timers to our program. So, I just like to always have time imported. Next thing we're going to need is date time, so we can understand date stamps. Um, now what we're going to need is uh, NumPy. So we're going to import NumPy as NP, just for a quick, easy shorthand. Then we're going to want to import three things from matplotlib specifically. So we want to import uh, matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. We want to import matplotlib.ticker as mticker. And then we want to import matplotlib.dates as mdates. So um, basically what this is going to do is just so we can actually like plot the stuff. This is so we can do dates with the ticker. And um, I believe also share access is involved in this, uh, which I'll explain later. And then mdates is so matplotlib charts understand date formats, right? So, you know, if you just wanted to plot like, one, you know, X and Y is like one, two, and then you wanted a three and a four, and then like a nine and a seven, or something like, like that, it understands it automatically. But if you try to throw dates at it, it's got to understand the dates. Um, so anyway, those are all the imports that we're going to need. Next, we're going to define a global variable, and that's going to be each stock. And in here, we're just going to make a list of two, just for uh, ease here. Um, but you could list out all of your stocks. But in this case, we're going to let's do Tesla because everybody likes Tesla. And um, I guess we'll do Apple. And uh, we'll just put those two in there. You could list out all of the stocks if you want. And along those lines, um, I should mention real quick that the stocks that we're going to be graphing this time around are the one day open, high, low, close stocks. Um, so if we look, this these are the stocks that we're going to use. Let me just open up, like Tesla will be using. So let's open up Tesla. Let me drag this down. Here. Okay, We're going to be using Tesla, and you should open up yours as well and make sure you're using the right stuff because the, the intraday data has a different timestamp, right? This one is kind of a, you, you understand what it says. Like you can look at this with your eyeballs and see that it's, you know, where the difference is, like, right, this is year 2012, this is month 8, this is day 27, and then we've got, you know, the, the actual price data and the volume data, but the intraday data is a much, first of all, it's an actual digit, it's an integer, and it's got, it's a very large one, and it starts with, like, 1, 3, and so on, so if your data looks like that, you're using the wrong data, we will eventually get to plotting that intraday data, but the conversion of that unit stamp to a date stamp adds one more layer of complexity that I don't want to throw at you just yet. We need to kind of get comfortable with charting. And really, the fundamentals of charting uh, either that data or this one day open ILO close data, they're the same. So there's no, there's not, it's not a good idea to start throwing those extra layers at you just yet. But what I'm showing you here will be applicable to that stuff um, soon. And we will get to actually charting that stuff pretty quick. Where is my thing? There it is. So, uh, let's go ahead and get in, and just as a quick aside, I will probably be running through this fairly uh, at a fairly decent pace. Uh, I do have a full matplotlib uh, tutorial series where we start at the very, very basic, so if you want to know more about matplotlib and graphing within Python, um, you can go there if you want to learn it, uh, maybe with a deeper understanding. I will try to explain everything as I go through it here, um, but yeah, if you feel like you're not quite keeping up, that's a good place to start, is that matplotlib playlist. Um, and just as an example, like the first, I think the first plot for that one is like maybe like three lines of, of code or something, <laughs> it's really simple. 
So anyways, uh, let's get started. So we're going to define our uh, function. That's going to work. Call it graph data and or data. And uh, in the parameter, we're just going to have stock, right? Yeah, that should be kind of familiar to the way that we've set up our last function. And then in here, we're going to have everything in case in our typical try and accept loop. I should bind try and accept to like some sort of key that just types this out because I use this in like every program. So print out uh, failed main loop and then the string strung out version of E. So now in our try loop, we're going to want to define uh, the stock file. So the stock file is going to be equal to the stock, you know, whatever goes in here. So in this case, it'll first come out as TSLA plus dot txt. So that's the stock file, right? So it'll be tsla.txt. Sure enough, if we look, yes, there it is. And which also means if this is not like your, whatever script we're writing right now is it has to be in the same directory as the stock file. But like, let's say Tesla was in backup. What we would do to change that is we would just say stock file equals, uh, you know, backup slash plus stock.txt, something like that, but that's not the case here. But if you wanted to know, that's how you would do it. So that's our stock file. Now we want to define this NumPy array, and the NumPy array um, is just really, really useful, and later on down the road, it will become even more useful. Um, NumPy is just a great, great uh, addition to Python. But anyway, to do this, we're going to define multiple variables. Every variable within our NumPy array has to be obviously defined. So if we look at the stock file, we see that the file begins with a date data. Everything is separated by a comma, and we, the order of the data is date, close, high, low, open, and volume, I believe. So that is the order and the names of the stuff. And just, just to be clear, we're going to call everything with a P, right, for open, high, low, close. So it'll be date, then close, P, high p low p and um you know mr syntax why are we doing that well the reason we have to do that is for this like if we type in open right that's a command to python and close isn't necessarily but uh it can be so we're not gonna we use the p because it just it, first of all everything is the same now and we kind of have to. so open p and then finally we ended with volume and these variables are going to be equal to np, which is how we noted numpy, np.load, loud, load text. And what text do we want to load? Well, we want to load that stock file. The delimiter, which is the separator, basically, for that file we already established was a comma. Do we want to unpack it? Of course we want to unpack it true oops true and this is becoming a very long line so let's just just hit enter once and this kind of just helps us organize things and then we're going to use converters and what we're going to do here is convert this ugly little timestamp to a you know legible stamp for numpy to actually understand what the heck is going on and later on, uh, what we will also do with this little stamp is um, we can use that to make open, high, low, close data and stuff. And it'll be awesome. So anyways, um, what element needs to be converted? Well, the zeroth element does because that's the date element. Now, how are we going to convert this? We're going to use m dates to do it. I told you we were going to use that. And then we're going to say strip date to num. And that is S-T-R-P-D-A-T-E number two and um and then in the uh, parentheses we define like how it reads that date right and what it's doing is it's taking that date and converting it to a number format that both matplotlib and actually numpy will understand um, but you won't understand it it's kind of like a unix stamp only um, it's not running the same risk that unix is to become outdated but uh, we're not talking about that right now so anyways percent Uppercase Y, and uppercase Y denotes a full year. Lowercase Y would just be like a 12. Uppercase Y for 2012. So that knocks that out. Then we've got a month and then the day of the month. And for month data, let's zoom over here. And as you can see, they're right next to each other. If they had like a dash, for example, you would just literally put the dash in there. But they don't. So then percent lowercase m, percent lowercase day. And that is how we read 
this. And just to show you, yes, we have uh, completed our load text um, call there. Whew. Okay, so that's done. Let me uh, zoom over a little bit so you see the same thing I do. And now we, what we want to do is start building our actual graph here. So the way that we're going to do that is going to say, we're going to say fig for figure equals plot dot figure or plt dot figure and then we can't eventually we'll probably put some parameters in here but for now we'll leave those empty um, now we're going to define ax1 and that's just short for axis one but you could call this anything you wanted right you're defining a variable here um, and this is going to be plot dot sub plot and we're just going to do one 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 oops and that's all we're going to do that's just how you make a subplot uh, the numbers in these parameters, it basically says like how much by how much and then what number of that how much is this subplot. So I expect that makes absolutely no sense to you. So let me explain just a little further. Let's say you did instead of 1, 1, 1, you did a 2 by 3, right? That means it's going to make a 2 by 3 square. And so that means there's obviously six positions that you could choose from. So you could say this is position three, position four, position one, etc. In this case, we're only plotting one thing, so it's a one by one. And then obviously it's number one, right? Am I right? So anyway, continuing on, AX1. Now what we want to do is start plotting this stuff. Since we have an open, high, low, close line, we're going to plot all of that. So date, and then open P, and then AX1.plot, uh, date, uh, let's just let me copy and paste. We got three more things. So copy and then paste, paste, and then now we want to do uh, high p, low p, close p. Okay, so that plots everything. Now what we want to do is um, I think what I'll do real quick is just let's just show you guys. Everybody wants to see where they stand so far. Um, but we will, we'll, I won't cut off the video here. We'll be adding a couple of things before I cut the video. So we'll save that. We'll run it. Oh, we have a syntax error. Plus, oh, okay. Plus open and then put the period. So if you copied me exactly, fix that. Hopefully you guys want numskulls and copying me. Oh, we haven't called. Okay, so run it. We'll call graph data. I thought this would be really quick to just show you guys, uh, but it's turning out not to be the case. Um, call a, well down at the bottom we'll call a for loop, so we'll say for, um, for stock in each stock, and then graph data, stock, and then we're just going to add a sleep function here. Save that. Now we'll run it. Okay. Phew. A lot of effort. So now you should have this little chart pop up here. And you should see that everything is kind of lining up, but this doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> and this is obviously the price, and we've got a line that looks like the Tesla price, but we need to fix this, right? <laughs> so let's fix that. So that's where we stand now. So now what we want to do is add some date information here um, and tell uh, NumPy and matplotlib how to understand the date. So we want to do ax1.xaxis.set underscore major underscore locator um, and in here we want to say m ticker dot max n l locator make sure you use the exact same casing that I did um, so capital N and then capital L for locator and 10 what that's saying is we're gonna have a maximum of 10 dates show up you could put like 50 if you wanted and a whole bunch will show up but we don't want to do that now the next thing we want to do is say ax1.xaxis.set underscore major uh, underscore formatter. And then in parentheses we uh, do mdates.date formatter. And then in here we specify how we want that date to appear. It's very similar to what I was explaining before. And this time we want it to appear a little better. So we'll do uppercase Y for the full year. And we want to see a dash percent M then a percent uh, day something like that so it's a little easier on the eyes to understand now um, we'll save that let's run that and see where we stand now and you can see that oh, okay we've got some dates here but if it's you know if we stretch it out it looks okay but what if we don't want to stretch it out every time right like that looks like junk so we kind of well, it would be nice if we could just like maybe rotate them a little bit so let's do that let's close that out 
and let's rotate it and then that'll be the last thing we do for this video and so we're going to say for label in ax one dot x axes dot get underscore tick labels so for loop what we want to do is label dot set underscore rotation and let's just put it like a 45 degree angle right nice little 45 degree angle save that now we run it and we have this little chart here and as you can see we're kind of running off the edge here um, but you can you can click this like configure subplots button I will also show you guys how to code it in but if you wanted to just absolutely fix it you can cl click on that configure subplots and then for bottom make it uh, a larger number and now you'll see that this stuff will fit but like I said I'll, I'll be showing you guys how to actually just code it in so it looks good right on load um, but this video is running a bit long and so I'm gonna close out of this graph and then I'm also gonna uh, cut the video here and we'll continue on in the next video as always thank you for watching thanks for your support and your subscriptions and until next time